Hello everyone this is part 10 of what if Naruto had the power to control vectors, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. They were close, really close. Two maybe three hours from Taki. Naruto couldn't wait after this he could relax only having to participate in the sealing ritual. At least as long as every other team held up their end of the deal. Hidden was also excited to get back into action now that his arms were reattached thanks to a doctor Naruto had found. Everything was looking good there hadn't been any Kanoa ninja attacking although Kirk ninja were becoming more common the closer they got to Taki, but they were easily dealt with. Hey Naruto we need to stop. Hidden said, we are not stopping so you can waste our time with your stupid ritual. Naruto yelled, they aren't stupid, and besides I wasn't talking about that I need to go take a piss. Hidden said, fine, Naruto said as Hidden walked off the road to go find a bush. Naruto was getting really fed up with Hidden. His rituals have put them back more than a day. Not to mention they had to go out of their way to find a doctor because Hidden couldn't defend himself. At least they wouldn't have to go on missions together after they captured the Seven Tails. Naruto took a look at the scenery waiting for Hidden to come back. They were on a dirt road that got little traffic. The sun was high in the sky and it was becoming increasingly hot. There were rabbits hopping around on the ground as crows were flying high in the sky. That was until the crows decided they were too good for the sky and came down to earth. Naruto watched as the crows conjugated at one place and formed a person that Naruto had heard a lot about. Well if it isn't Itachi Uchiha. I thought I was done getting visits from the leaf. Did my last message not get through question mark? Naruto said his arms crossed and smug smirk on his face. Don't worry we got it and that's why they sent me. Itachi said, and before Naruto could even wipe the smug look off his face Itachi did a series of hand signs. A huge fireball way bigger than Naruto had ever seen before was coming for him. Of course all Naruto had to do was put his hand out and the fireball was sent right back. Atachi knew this and by the time the fireball had gone back to sender he was long gone. Naruto had no idea where Atachi was as the fireball and obstructed his vision. What the hell is going on question mark? Hidden yelled returning to the road. Trouble? Naruto said right as a crow flew right in front of him blocking his line of sight yet again. When the crow passed Itachi was suddenly standing directly in front of Naruto. Naruto stopped himself from looking into Itachi's eyes and take the ground with his foot sending rocks and other debris at Itachi. Itachi didn't even flinch as he blocked every piece. Itachi then jumped over Hidden's side as Hidden tried to cut his stomach open. Naruto sent a cyclone Itachi's way hoping that since Itachi was in the air he wouldn't be able to dodge, but Itachi used an equally powerful wind jutsu cancelling them both out. Returning to the ground Itachi launched hundreds of flaming shurikens. Hidden blocked them with his scythe while Naruto reflected them. We're getting nowhere, Hidden said. All we have to do is spill a little bit of his blood then it will be over. Naruto said rushing Itachi. Naruto did the same thing he did with Asuma continuously attack until his opponent made a mistake and got touched. Itachi wasn't like Asuma though he was able to dodge every one of Naruto's strikes with ease. Naruto got frustrated and started hovering making his attacks even faster. Itachi wasn't even affected by the change of speed Naruto still couldn't land. Come on fight me, Naruto said. I am, Itachi said as he continued to dodge. This only served to piss Naruto off. Hidden help me out over here. Hidden came to Naruto's aid swinging his scythe wildly trying to hit Itachi, but it still wasn't enough. He would dodge Naruto's attacks and blocked Hidden's with a kunai. Why don't you just fucking die? Question mark, Hidden yelled. Itachi didn't say anything and the fight went on. Neither side made any progress Itachi couldn't hit them nor could they could they hit Itachi. It was a stalemate with not sign of breaking until Hidden actually cut Itachi's cheek. Whiter it was because Itachi had become too tried to properly dodge or if Hidden had just gotten lucky Naruto did not know, but now they had a little bit of his blood. Hidden backed off to make the seal as Naruto kept attacking Itachi to keep him occupied, but Itachi never even made an attempt to stop Hidden. 
Naruto found this very odd did Itachi just not know about Hidden's powers question mark Naruto found that hard to believe, but they had the blood so Itachi would die if he didn't stop Hidden, so what was he planning? Hidden finished the seal and stabbed himself in the heat. Itachi coughed up some blood before falling over dead. This is the best the leaf can do question mark, Naruto said kicking Itachi's head to make sure he was actually dead. What a pushover. Sure he could dodge, but he didn't even try to stop himself from getting killed. Hidden said walking up to Naruto. Naruto couldn't believe that the person who managed to take out most of the Uchiha clan had gone down so easily, but there he was dead in the street. Let's just go, Naruto said turning back towards the road. Naruto knew something was off about Itachi's death, but he was still surprised when he turned and saw Itachi standing a little down the road perfectly fine. Naruto's eyes darted back to Itachi's corpse which was still there. Naruto knew they'd been had. Itachi had cast a genjutsu, but when question mark Naruto guessed it didn't matter he should have realized it was a genjutsu when Itachi went down so easily. Naruto disrupted the genjutsu and the body disappeared. The body wasn't the only thing that had a genjutsu on it, Itachi's eyes were different they weren't the regular Sharingan. Naruto didn't have time to think about it as a black fire appeared between him a hidden. Naruto had never seen a fire like that before and since he could feel the heat he knew it was different enough that his reflection wouldn't work. Naruto leaped to the side, but not quick enough as the fire expanded too fast and set Naruto's right arm ablaze. Naruto stopped himself from screaming in pain as the fire burned through his cloak. Hidden had tried to block the fire, but it was a failed attempt. Hidden whole body was lit up in a black blaze. Naruto had to think fast or he'd be burned alive. Even if it was different enough to get past his reflection it was still fire, so cutting off the oxygen should put it out. Naruto reflected all the oxygen away from his arm but to his horror the fire didn't go out. What the hell is this? Question mark, Hidden yelled the fire now burning so deep into his skin that it would have killed any normal person. Naruto had to do something about this fire before he ended up like Hidden. It took Naruto only a few seconds to come up with an idea, but he really didn't want to go through with it, but seeing as the fire was almost to his shoulder he really didn't have a chose. Naruto closed his eyes and focused on the sections of his arm that was on fire. Once he could tell where each section was he repelled the skin off his arm. Naruto couldn't hold back his scream as his skin was ripped from his body, but at least the fire went with it. It looked like someone had taken a cheese grater to Naruto's arm. Naruto redirected his blood so it would stay in his body and not spill out of his arm. It didn't do anything to help the pain, but at least he wouldn't bleed out. Naruto looked towards Hidden to see what had happened to him, it wasn't good. The fire had devoured Hidden's entire body all that was left was his ring, side and a few pieces of bone. Even if Hidden's was immortal he wouldn't be able to do much as a pile of ashes, so for all intest and purpose Hidden was dead. I impressed you managed to stop yourself from getting burned alive. Atachi said sounding actually kind of frustrated his plan didn't work. Naruto noticed how one of Atachi's eyes was bleeding. At least now Naruto knew that using that strange fire was damaging to Atachi as well, but that didn't change the fact that Naruto still had no idea what the equation for that fire not fire could be. Unfortunately for Naruto he was still in the middle of a fight and just because that attack hurt Atachi as well didn't seem to stop him from using it. Naruto rolled out of the way as black fire once again appeared where he had been standing. Even if the fire didn't hit Naruto it didn't mean he was fine. Naruto found out that any sudden movement caused his arm to burn with pain, and rolling certainly didn't feel very good. It looked like he would have to end this quickly. Naruto hit the ground and the world shook. The road that they had been standing on was no more as the ground spilt in half. Atachi having suddenly lost his footing fell down into the chasm while Naruto used his cyclones to fly above it. Naruto scanned the chasm refusing to believe that this would be the end of Atachi, and he was right he saw Atachi running up the side of the chasm. Naruto took out all the pebbles he had on him and pelted Atachi with them, but Atachi was able to dodge them all. He climbed out of the chasm and immediately black fire appeared near Naruto. It got caught up in one of his cyclones create a vortex of fire. Naruto had no choice but to stop that cyclone or risk ending up like hidden. Stopping that cyclone had screwed up Naruto's flying ability and he didn't have time to make a new one before crashing to the ground. Naruto held his arm painfully as the impact nearly made him black out.
Naruto got back up to his feet shacking quite a bit. Atachi was just looking at him with a blank expression. One of his eyes were closed and bleeding pretty badly now. It looked like he wouldn't be able to use that pesky fire anymore. Give up, Atachi said. What question mark, Naruto replied. This is a hopeless fight you can barely stand and I haven't been hit once. Just give up I'm sure the hockage will make you some sort of deal. Atachi said. Naruto grinded his teeth. You think you have me against a wall. That I'm down and out. You're just saying that because without that fire of yours you can't hit me. No even without my fire I still have something that can beat you. But I rather not use it. Atachi stated. Stop screwing with me. Naruto yelled sending his three remaining cyclones at Itachi. Naruto staggered a little bit as that attack had made the pain in his arm flare a little too much, and yet, Itachi still dodged all the cyclones only having the use of one eye apparently not affecting him at all. Naruto was panting heavily at this point. Never before had he been forced to push his body so hard, and it was all that bastard's fault. Who did he think he was to come up to Orochimaru's most powerful creation and fight him on the same level question mark no he wasn't on the same level he was trash just like the rest of them. He was just another ninja trying to prove that he's the strongest, but he's not, and Naruto would prove that. Naruto let out a monstrous yell full of hate and rage. He held his arm up to the sky like he was trying to grab heaven. The wind changed from a cool breeze to a whiplash of air. It circled around Naruto's hand in a spiral pattern. It kept compressing in Naruto's hand until it became a blue bubbly sphere. Then the wind surrounded it in a grayish transparent cover. Atachi realized how much it looked like a gray raising gun with a blue core, but this was on a whole different level. Just the creation of it made the floor beneath Naruto shatter. Are you scared yet? Question mark. Naruto yelled bringing the object to his side. Are you trembling in fear having to face the greatest power in the universe question mark? I would be because it's not every day that someone creates plasma to use as a weapon question mark this is what you get when you try and take the king's crown. You're insane, Atachi said. It doesn't matter what I am. If I have the power to destroy you. Naruto shouted creating two cyclones and shooting himself towards Atachi. Even though the plasma wasn't anywhere close to the ground it was tearing it to pieces as Naruto ran over it. Atachi jumped into the air to avoid it, but Naruto created two more cyclones giving him the lift he needed to hit Atachi if only barely. The plasma clipped Atachi's leg but even that was severely damaging. Atachi felt his bones break his leg twist his blood vessels exploding as Naruto flew past him. Naruto swooped down and grabbed hidden scythe and ring, the plasma now gone, before flying away. Atachi wanted to chase after him but one look at his mangled leg told Atachi that trying to catch up to him would be like a rock trying to catch a cheetah, so Atachi watched Naruto fly off wondering what was gonging through the self-proclaimed strongest ninja's mind. Naruto didn't make it very far, only far enough where he thought Atachi wouldn't be able to chase him. He landed, stumbled a few steps, and then fell on the ground having no intention of getting up anytime soon. Running away after giving that whole speech about how he was the strongest certainly was humiliating. Well Naruto guessed it couldn't be helped. Naruto didn't have huge chakra reserves, and since a good chunk of it was dedicated to his reflection he actually had lower than average chakra. It had never really been a problem before since most of his moves didn't use that much chakra, flying and creating plasma were the only two moves that required a lot of chakra, and he had always won in a few moves but if that fight had lasted any longer he would have risked using the chakra dedicated to his reflection. Why did he do that spill on how he was the strongest question mark? He had never claimed to be the strongest before, so why had he partially yelled it to Itachi question mark? Naruto guessed he had always believed he was the strongest after all Orochimaru had always told him he was, and after escaping he had done things at an age where he shouldn't have even been out of the academy that an Anbu would have a hard time doing. Maybe it was just because in Naruto's mind him being the strongest had always just been a fact like his very existence was all the proof he needed, but Itachi had shaken that proof. It had been the first time Naruto had faced a prodigy like himself, and it shook him, maybe he could be beaten. Sure there had been incidents before like Shikamaru and Lee, but those had always been tricks that the weak would use to beat the strong nothing that Naruto wouldn't be able to handle a second time. Itachi was different he had killed Hidden with little effort. He had injured Naruto to the point where he couldn't even stand. He had won.
With those thoughts in his mind Naruto could no longer take the pain in his arm and fell into an uneasy sleep. The rookie nine, or now the rookie six, was sitting around one of the training fields. So your brother has been tasked with taking care of Naruto? Question mark, Shino asked. Yes he told me right before he left. Sasuke said. I hope he brings Naruto's head back on a stick. Kiba said. Kiba. Hanata said not believing that Kiba would say something like that in front of Minima and Naruto. We can't keep defending him. Kiba said then turned to Naruto and Minima. Listen I know we promised to help you bring him back, but he's killed or friends. He's a monster you two pretend not to hear the rumors because you think he's a good person, but I think those rumors are. And just what rumors would those be question mark, Minima said looking angry but in realty about ready to cry. That Naruto is a psychopath trained by Orokimaru to kill everyone and everything, and that he trained Yuri and Hanata's sister to be bloodthirsty killers. That he's only part of the Akatsuki to test his skills against Jinchuriki. That he destroys entire villages just because he can. Those are all just rumors spread by other villages to make them think that Naruto's some sort of demon child. Naruto said. He is a demon child. Kiba yelled his voice echoing in the surrounding woods and he immediately knew he had gone too far. So what does that make me question mark? Naruto yelled storming off. Naruko wait. Minima said chasing off after her. Naruko walked all the way home without saying a word to Minima despite how hard Minima tried to get here to talk. She slammed open the door to her house disrupting Kushina. Naruko what the hell do you think you're doing? She yelled. Kasan is Naruto so evil that we have to kill him? Question mark, Naruko asked. Kushina stopped whatever she was going to say and looked at Naruko with penetrating eyes. Minima was equally as shocked and didn't know what to say, but it was obvious that Naruko wasn't bugging without an answer. Kushina sighed. I don't know even though he's my son I don't know anything more about him than you do. If the rumors are to be believed then it would seem like Naruto's a lost cause hellbent of destruction, and we know that's he's killed lots of our own ninjas including some of your friends. Naruko deflated with every word it seemed that Naruto really was the devil in disguise. But even if I don't know anything about Naruto I know lots about Mito. Kushina said with a smile on her face. I know that no matter how much she may hate us or how desperate she was to find Naruto she would never follow him if he was completely evil. Even if you think that. Not everyone is so inclined to dismiss what Naruto has done. Jiraiya said entering the house though the window. What have I told you about using the door question mark. Kushina yelled. Don't be so uptight about it. Jiraiya said waving it off. What are you doing here question mark, Naruko asked. I'm here because Minato and I have been talking and we think we've figured out a way to add a Chaka nature to the Raisingan. Jiraiya said. That's great, Naruko said. Yeah it is. Why don't you two go to the usually training field Minto's already waiting question mark, Jiraiya said. The girls ran off to the training field already having forgotten about the bad mood. Jiraiya chuckled as they left such kids. I wouldn't be so sure. They may not seem like it, but learning the next stage of the raising gun is another way to get closer to Naruto. Kushina said with motherly affection before switching to a more serious mood. Anyways you didn't come here just for that. Atachi sent a crow. What happened question mark, Kushina asked. Nothing good. Hidden's dead, but Naruto got away and Atachi leg was nearly separated from his body, so he won't be back for a little while he gets it healed. Jiraiya said. At least Hidden's dead. Kushina said. About that in his report Atachi mentioned how Naruto went on about how he was the strongest ninja in the world, and from Atachi's retelling of the battle that might not be so far from the truth. Jiraiya said. Don't you think you're being a little dramatic question mark one means sure Naruto's powerful, but he's not the best. Kushina said. You want to know how Atachi got so heavily injured. Jiraiya said with an aura of dread and seriousness around him. So much so that Kushina wasn't sure she wanted to hear. What happened question mark. Apparently Naruto created plasma and as Atachi described it, it was the ultimate Raisingen. Even with the girls learning an enhanced version of the Raisingen they still won't be any closer to Naruto. There has to be something we can do question mark, Kushina pleaded. I don't know we'll have to see how powerful the enhanced Raisingen is. Jiraiya said. Until then Naruto is still an icon of hate to a lot of people and it's even starting to affect our own village. I know he has some good in him. Kushina said. 
Jiraiya sighed, maybe it was Kushina who was acting like a kid. Naruto awoke to a giant plant. At first Naruto thought he had gone crazy, but then the plant started talking and Naruto realized everything was fine, as weird as that might seem. It's about time you got up. Atachi really handed it to you. Zetsu said. How long was I out? Question mark. Naruto asked getting up still feeling pain in his arm, but now it was bearable. About 12 hours, but it's going to be an eternity for Hidden. Forget about Hidden I won't shed any tears for him and I doubt the girls will either. Naruto said taking off his damaged Akatsuki cloak to inspect his arm. There were chunks of missing skin all along his arm you could see right to the muscles. Naruto would have surely bled out in no time if it wasn't for his powers. Did you have anything for this question mark? Zetsu tossed him some bandages and a new cloak. Naruto started wrapping his arm as Zetsu went on. You'll need a new partner, Deodara still available. I'm not waiting around for someone I'll just get the seven tails in my own. Besides Deodara already captured his Jinchuriki, so there's no reason for him to become active again. Naruto said. Unlike you Deodara doesn't like to sit around and do nothing he's more than willing to take on another Jinchuriki. Zetsu said. Well good for him. Naruto said as he finished taping up his arm. But I'll be fine on my own. Naruto put on his cloak and went to grab Hidden's side. Hidden's ring was gone probably already snatched up by Zetsu. By the way give this to Hatomi. Tell her it was a gift from our dear friend. Zetsu took the side as Naruto speed off. You'll still be getting a new partner even if you capture the seven tails on your own. Zetsu said, but was not greeted with a response. Do you think he can do it on his own question mark he's still injured. Injured or not he'll win, but in the meantime we still have work to do we're closing in and a package to deliver. It took Naruto maybe two hours to reach his destination. He stopped in the tree line planning his strategy. He knew that the only way to enter Taki was through our under cave system, and it was guarded like no one's business. Naruto counted eight Kirk Ninja probably Junin and four Taki Ninja. Looks like they really didn't want anyone to get in. The best plan would be for Naruto to wait it out and find the seven tails without being caught, but Naruto didn't have the skill to sneak past such a force, and more importantly Naruto didn't like to wait. Naruto simply walked up to the ninja Akatsuki cloak fluttering behind him. I'm here for the seven tails would you mind telling me where she is question mark, Naruto asked in his nicest tone. It's the Akatsuki, one of the guards shouted before the whole lot ran towards Naruto. Come there's no reason for having to start a fight. Naruto said as he punched a Kirk ninja who got just a little too close. His nose burst with blood as he fell to the ground hurt but not dead. But if that's what you really want then I'll be more than happy to oblige. The last ninja fell as the fight reached its three minute mark. Naruto was sure the earthquake he had created to wipe out most of the guards had alerted the village, so he would have to move fast. He traversed the caves and was greeted with a welcoming squad when he entered the village through the lake. Did they send the entire village question mark, Naruto asked as he stared down at least a hundred enemy ninja. Naruto didn't get a vocal response, but he certainly got one. Almost every ninja in the crowd shot high-pressured water from their mouths. You'll have to do better than that. Naruto said as the wave of water was sent back to sender. Most of the ninja were able to dodge, but some of the slower ones weren't so lucky and got crushed by the huge amount of water. The other ninja were quick to strike back and sent every attack in the book at him. These however were small attacks so even when they were reflected they could be easily dodged. Naruto didn't want or have the time to deal with all of them so he got to dry land and started running around the village still being pelted by all sorts of attacks. Come out, come out wherever you all my little Jinchuriki. I've got a treat for you. Naruto sung as he ran down street after street. As Naruto ran civilians ran like hell trying to get back into their homes even though Naruto wasn't even attacking, but even so house were being set on fire knocked down and destroyed as attack after attack kept bouncing off Naruto. The ninja that had sworn to protect the village were NWT the cause of all the destruction. Of course they didn't see it that way they only saw an enemy that had to be taken out. All the damage was just necessary sacrifices. What a stupid ideology. Naruto had only come here for one person and they he would have been on his way, but the death toll and damages would be far more hurtful to Taki than losing their Jinchuriki, of course they were still going to lose it. Naruto ran for a while not really knowing what to do. 
They obviously had hidden her somewhere, and with all the chaos happening in the village he doubted that he would be able to find her. Naruto suddenly stopped to try and think of a plan and one of the ninja chasing him ran into him snapping his neck. The kunais and jutsu still rained down on Naruto because these idiots didn't seem to understand that the quantity of attacks didn't mean anything to Naruto. All the nearby house were completely pulverized by the backlash of all the attacks. People ran from their homes most bloody and some having kunais embedded in their bodies. A mother holding a crying child came out her face streaked with blood and a rather large burn on her arm ran out onto the street. Stop this can't you see what you're doing? She screamed as the child wailed. Her cries fell on deaf ears as the ninja paid her no mind and continued their assault. Naruto could tell what was going to happen a mile away, and a few seconds later it did. One of the ninja threw a kunai no different from any of the other that had be shoot, but this one was positioned in just the right place to cause a very bloody accident. It hit Naruto's reflection and was shot toward the woman. Her civilian reflexes were not enough to dodge it, but to Naruto's surprise she didn't get hit. Instead a girl with green hair and wearing rather revealing clothing pushed the woman out of the way, and managed to dodge the kunai herself. This display actually stopped the ninja from attacking. What the hell are you doing you here question mark. One of the ninja yelled. I wanted to help not sit in room while my village was being destroyed. The girl said. Naruto instantly reconsidered the girl. She was Fu, his target. What do you know the seven tails has a heart question mark Naruto thought as he looked at the woman Fu had just saved, but the woman didn't have the thankful look a person in her position should have had. Far from it she looked at Fu with absolute disgust, like she would have rather been saved by a toad than by her. Then without saying a word she ran away. We don't need your help. We had it under control until you showed up. Just go back to your cell and let the real ninja deal with it. The same ninja yelled as the others were nodding behind him. But she would have died if I hadn't been her. Fu said pointing to the woman she had just saved only to see that the woman was no longer there. The ninja, looking rather full of himself, looked down at Fu with a sneer. I don't see any woman. You were obviously just trying to escape you bitch. We'll have to punish you after we handle this. Hey, Naruto said in a voice that sounded like a killer scolding his victim for being dead. This caught everyone's attention as they looked upon the person who had been the prime target of their attention not even a minute ago. Fu even looked back to see that Naruto was standing directly behind her, so close that she could feel his icy breath as the words left his mouth. You people are very rude you know. Ignoring someone who came all this, and had to endear so much hardship to get here, but you know I'm not even mad because the person I've come to see has finally greeted me. Naruto put his hand on Fu's shoulder. Why don't you come with me question mark. Fu knew who the man behind her was as well. He was Naruto the son of the fourth Hokage. Apparently he was insane. Fu wasn't so sure about that part, but she was sure that he was incredibly powerful. Just his aura told her that. She's not going away where. One of the ninja yelled and all of them resumed their barrage not giving any thought to the fact that Fu was standing right in front of him. Fu seeing that she was about to becoming a human target dummy grew wings and flew up. Naruto watched her as the attacks bounced harmlessly off him. Wow didn't know she could do that. Naruto said. But you aren't the only one. Naruto said as he formed his own flying mechanism and flew after her. Fu looked back shocked to see that Naruto was able to fly as well. Naruto was gaining on her as his cyclones were much faster than her wings. Naruto thought it was only going to be a matter of time before he captured his target, but something caught his attention. Fu was leaving being some sort of sparkling substance behind her. Naruto didn't know what that would accomplish until it blew up in a ray of light so bright that Naruto couldn't even see his nose in front of his face. It didn't last very long, but by the time it had ended Naruto had lost sight of Fu. Naruto couldn't believe it even if his reflection stopped it from blinding him he still couldn't see past the light. So Naruto had to waste time flying around trying to find Fu, and when he did she would use the same trick again, and force Naruto to go looking for her again. This happened a lot and Naruto was getting frustrated. There was also the problem that Fu would be able to keep this up a lot longer than Naruto would. He could already feel his body telling him he was using too much chakra, and he doubted Fu had even used a tenth of her chakra. Not to mention the idiots below were still shooting at him. 
Naruto once again caught sight of Fu, and just like he expected she spit out that sparkly substance. Naruto had already determined that closing his eyes didn't matter since Fu would still be able to get away while his eyes were closed, but Naruto had been watching and was pretty confident he'd be able to catch Fu even without his sight. Naruto looked down at the city below, right below him was nice little house that would have looked cozy, but the damage that had been done, and was still being done, made it look like a hellscape. To the left was the village's leader house and to the right were a few farm houses. A bright light blinded Naruto's vision, but this time instead of cursing himself he swung to the right and listened for the beating of Fu's wings. Just as Naruto had planned he heard her almost directly in front of him. He reached his hand out and caught a hold of her leg. Using his enhanced strength he swung Fu towards the ground. Fu not being able to stabilize herself crashed to the ground. The impact was surprising soft as Fu did manage to use her wings to slow he descent, but by this time Naruto could see and dive bombed Fu. He landed on her stomach making he spit up blood as his force broke the ground below her and created a crater. Naruto swung Fu over his shoulder as her wings disappeared. Naruto felt Fu struggling, and it was making his arm growl in pain. Stop moving or I'll rip off your legs, Naruto said, and immediately Fu stopped. How did you get me question mark, the green haired girl asked having realized that the son of the Hokage had bested her. Whenever I went to go look for you I noticed that you would hide in less populated areas, so I betted that you'd fly towards the fields and I was right. I guessed to wanted to keep the battle away from as many people as possible. Naruto said as he started walking towards the exit. Almost immediately they were surrounded by ninja. They all looked like they were ready to kill, but it wasn't directed at Naruto. Look what you've done, one of the higher ranking ninja said. You drew the Akatsuki here to our village you monster. Do you know how many have died all because of you question mark? But, Fu tried to say, but the ninja weren't hearing it. You're going to be burned for what you've done you devil whore. All you've ever done is run this village into the ground. One of the tacky ninja said. Get out of my way. Naruto said walking forward. Don't tell me what to do you Akatsuki scum. Just because you're trying to rid of Jinchuriki doesn't mean you're good. Naruto grabbed him by the throat with his free arm. Listen here you rat of a ninja. It's easy to blame someone else for your mistake. I mean of course you don't want your ass held responsible for the damages and I can understand that. But when your preaching gets in my way then I have a problem. I've gotten what I've come here for, so move or I'll show you a real monster. Naruto said dropping the terrified ninja. Naruto started walking forward again giving each and every ninja a death stare. Naruto noticed that a majority of the Taki were happy that he was taking Fu away. While the Kirk ninja didn't share the same hatred for the Jinchuriki they were way too terrified to approach Naruto as they had seen him run around the entire village without taking a hit. Naruto walked down the village streets looking at the burned and damaged buildings. Civilians were gathered along the sidewalk watching Naruto pass. None of them said a word, but everyone one of them were looking at Fu like it was her fault their homes had been destroyed. After a few blocks Fu couldn't take any more and dropped her head so she was looking directly into Naruto's shoulder. Naruto found this very odd how almost none of them were looking at him with hate even though if they wanted to blame someone for what happened it should have been him. They weren't looking at him favorably of course they knew that he could kill every one of them, yet there was no fear in their eyes when they looked at him. It was like he was a natural disaster, sure they were bad and did lots of damage, but you couldn't fight them, so you just had to accept them and move on. Naruto made it to the lake that would be his exit, but there was someone else there. Shibuki the head of Takagaku was standing there. Fu must have sensed him because she looked up at him hopeful that he would fight to save her, but Naruto could see it in his eyes. He might be the only one in the entire village that thought of Fu as a person, but as Naruto passed him all he did was clench his fists because he knew that it was over. Naruto was too strong. Naruto exit the village with a depressed Fu over his shoulder. Naruto could tell from her slight shacking that she was crying. Naruto thought about knocking her out since the shaking was irritating to his arm, but decided not to. After all it was a long ways to the closest hideout that had the ability to seal and Naruto would prefer someone to talk to now that Hidden was dead. Sugatsu and the girls were sitting around eating their meal when Zetsu popped out of the ground in front of them. Hello we bring gifts. Enough with your antics we don't have any time to waste. Oh fine Hatomi this is for you. 
Zestu said handing her a scythe. Wait this is Hidden's scythe. Hatomi said. Not any more Hidden's dead, at least as dead as Hidden can be. What about Naruto is he okay question mark, Hanabi said jumping to her feet. Relax Naruto's fine just got his arm burned by Itachi, he should be fighting the seven tails right now, now we have to go. And just like that Zestu merged back in the ground before anyone could ask any more questions. Hatomi looked at the scythe thinking about the person who used to own it. True she and Hidden weren't practically close, but Hatomi would consider him an ally and Itachi had killed him just like he had her parents. Hatomi wanted to curse Itachi, but it won't accomplish anything. The only thing she could do was get stronger and thanks to Hidden she had a weapon that could help her. Hatomi was about to strap it to her back but she noticed a piece of paper wrapped around the hilt. What's that question mark? Mito asked as Hatomi peeled it off. It's a note from Naruto. Hatomi said and Hanabi was instantly behind them reading the note with them. Dear Bratz and Sugutsu, I have a very important mission for you one the Akatsuki can't know about. I have recently discovered that Orokimaru has information about me that could be very dangerous to me if anyone found out. So I want you to kill him and burn anything you find. I know that he's powerful, but I believe the four of you can kill him. Besides you won't be alone the Akatsuki will still be helping you after all they have their own reasons for killing Orokimaru. But I am afraid that Orokimaru will try to use this information about me as a bargaining chip. You'll need to make sure that doesn't happen. As for finding Orokimaru Zetsu told us when we sealed the six tails that he has narrowed down his located, and I happen to know that Orokimaru only has one base in the area Zetsu described, so I want you to go there, so you'll be the closet team when Zetsu finds the exact location of the base, and he'll call you. However he will defiantly call an actually Akatsuki team as well so be wary of that. Below that was the location of where they were supposed to be. Come on Naruto's counting on us. We can't fail him now. Hanabi said as she started marching off. Hold up there fan girl. I'm finishing my meal before we go anywhere. Sugatsu said. Hatomi and Mito giggled at the Hanabi being called a fan girl. I'm not a fan girl. And stop laughing at me. Hanabi yelled as Naruto and Minima were training as Naruto was walking with a lump over his shoulder as Taki was rebuilding as Itachi was lying in a hospital bed waiting for his leg to heal, and as Minato was doing paperwork thinking the state of his family and the state it was heading towards. Killing Orokimaru Shaw was a tall order, Hanabi thought as she made her way towards the place Naruto had sent them. Could they really do it even with the Akatsuki's help question mark Hanabi didn't know, but if Orokimaru really did have a weakness on Naruto then he had to be taken out. There was no other option, he was a threat. Mito and Hatomi had similar thoughts running through their minds. Orokimaru was a san and after all one of the best ninjas the leaf had ever produced. He had even created Naruto's powers from the ground up. He wouldn't be taken down so easily, but Naruto believed in him, so they had to believe in Naruto's training. The trip wasn't terribly long. They set up camp near Orokimaru's base and were going to stay there until Zetsu called on them. Hatomi practiced with her new scythe picturing Itachi in every tree she cut down. Mito and Hanabi were creating a plan to fight Orokimaru getting information from Sugatsu about his skills. And as they were planning they truly felt that they could take down Orokimaru because even if he was a san and even if he had a small army of his creations to back him up. They had the training of Naruto, and the strength of the Akatsuki on their side. This wasn't going to be a battle this was going to be a small war. One that could very well decided the future of the Akatsuki and more importantly Naruto. It was getting dark and Naruto was about ready to call it a day. He thought about what to do with his traveling companion. Fu had cried for a while after they had left Taki, but she eventually stopped. Not just crying but everything. She didn't talk, she didn't move, she didn't seem to live. Naruto set her down on the ground and just looked at her blank face. Why didn't you use your chakra cloak question mark if you had your probably would have been able to fly faster than me and then the fight might have turned out very differently. Naruto asked. Fu snapped out of whatever thought she was in and for the first time since they left the village she was aware of her surroundings. She looked around after apparently shocked that it was already night, and she was no longer on Naruto's shoulder, but just because she was aware didn't make her look any less broken. He body was still stiff and her eyes still had that loneliness in them. 
She could have made a break for it but her eyes just returned to Naruto as she answered his question. I didn't want to hurt anyone. If I did they would hate me. Fu said. They were going to hate you no matter what. Naruto said taking off his cloak so he could replace the bandages on his arm. How did that happen question mark, Fu asked trying her best to keep the conversation going. Naruto guessed that since she had been snapped back in reality the silence gave her time to think which he turned gave her time to hurt and that was too hard to bear. My father sent one of his top ninja to kill me, and I'll have to admit Itachi was pretty good. Naruto said deciding to relive Fu of the silence. You fought against Itachi Uchiha. No wonder you got so badly injured, Fu said sounding sorry for him. I wasn't helpless you know. Naruto said rather irritated that Fu was talking down to him. I broke his leg you know. Fu didn't say anything after that until Naruto finished wrapping his arm. So what's going to happen to me question mark. I'm going to take you to one of the Akatsuki's bases and there we'll rip the seven tails out of you and you'll die. Naruto said matter of factly looking up to see Fu shocked expression. You want to run question mark. Fu sighed. No even I can tell that you'll catch me way before I could make it anywhere. Damn right I could, Naruto said causing Fu to puff out her cheeks in annoyance. Well at least I won't have to suffer under my village anymore. Fu said as an afterthought. But you said you didn't go into your cloak because you didn't want to hurt them. Naruto said. I thought that one day they would come to accept me. That I could walk around like a normal ninja without being looked at like I was a monster. Haven't you ever wanted that question mark you must be in a similar situation with all your power. No I've never cared if people think I'm a monster or insane. In fact it helps me, keeps the idiots from attacking me. Naruto said with a smirk thinking about how afraid the tacky ninja looked when he left. So are you insane question mark, Fu said in a monument of wonder, but the blank look Naruto gave her made her wish that she had never asked. They sat there in silence for a while Naruto just giving her that uncomfortable look. Naruto finally let out a groan and answered her question. If you ask me I don't think I'm different than any other ninja. The only difference is that I don't have village backing me. But what about all those people you killed question mark, Fu said. All ninja kill people I just happen to get more than my fair share. Naruto said. I don't go out and murder for fun as many people might think. In fact time the only times I've gone out to specially kill people has been restricted to bandits, Jinchuriki and one indicant with the leaf. Two of those things I only did because I was ordered to. The other was because I was in need of money. Other than that all my kills have come from people who have attacked me first. I didn't even attack any of the civilians in your village that was your guy's fault. So ask yourself this, am I insane just because I don't show mercy to the people that attacked me question mark. I guess not, but I do think you share some of the blame for all the destruction in the village. Fu said. I know, if I had never have come then none of it would have happened. Is that what you're trying to say question mark, Naruto said. While that is true that wasn't what I was going to say. Fu said. You have so much power more than enough to change the world. You could have sent those attacks into the ground or up into the sky but you didn't you let them follow your normal reflection and all the destruction followed. How much effort would it have taken you to just send those attacks off somewhere harmless question mark. Naruto thought about for a little bit. Not much, but why would I do anything to help the village that I'm attacking question mark. Because you have the power to do so. Fu yelled a few tears streaming down her face. Fu must have realized what she had done and immediately pulled back wiping her face clean. I'm sorry it's just that there are so many people who want as much power as they can get, and know a lot of people would use that power from evil, but some want it to protect their friends, their family, their village. Just seeing you having so much power yet not even us it for evil or good makes me wonder why you even joined the Akatsuki. What's your goal question mark? Goal question mark, Naruto said questioning it himself. Why did he join the Akatsuki question mark? Just because they asked him to question mark no it was because being part of a powerful organization gave him what he wanted most, peace. What I want is peace. Not for the world just for me. Fu gave Naruto a strange look asking him to explain. I was created to be the best the one to stand above all others, but having that much power isn't all it's cracked up to be. 
When you have so much power people become afraid of you, and when people are afraid of you they either want you on their team or in the ground. Everyday people would come after me trying desperately to prove that they had what it takes to bring me down, but to this day I can count on one hand how many people have actually hurt me, but that's not enough for them they'll keep trying until I'm brought down. I decided to join the Akatsuki because they didn't need me. Even if I had denied their offer they wouldn't have bothered me unless I attacked them. So the reason I joined the Akatsuki is because I didn't need to. So if you want to know what my goal is it's never having to use my powers again. To live a normal life just like you wanted, but the only way for me to do that is to surround myself with other powerful people like the Akatsuki or become so powerful that even the best of the best will be too afraid to fight me. And you want to know something for the first time it happened. Your village saw me and realized that fighting me was like going down a one-way road. There would be no return. Fu looked at Naruto in a whole new light. He wasn't that different from her. They both just wanted to live normal lives. They were both too high for people to understand them. The only difference was that Fu wanted to lower down to the regular world. One where she could have friends and people wouldn't fear her for her power. But Naruto wanted to rise even higher, so much so, that people wouldn't even be able to see him. Hey how about we be friends? Fu said with a warm smile. Naruto looked at her like she was insane. Friends question mark you do know you're going to be dead soon, and I'm going to be the cause. I know but I still have a life to live before that happens, so I'm not going to waste it feeling sorry for myself. Fu said holding out her hand. Naruto looked at Fu outstretched hand and chuckled. You know with all the stuff you were saying earlier I thought you were intelligent, but now I can see how much of an idiot you really are. So you don't want to be my friend, Fu said the smile that was on her face disappearing and her hand lowering, but before she could pull it completely back Naruto took a hold of it. Fu's face immediately lit up while Naruto was unreadable with a blank expression. I guess the world does favor the stupid. Naruto said looking at his new friend. A few days later, Orokimaru was his office thinking of a way to stop the oncoming disaster. The Akatsuki had found him out that much was clear. If Orokimaru's prediction was right then the Akatsuki team would be here by sundown. Orokimaru turned to see his Akatsuki ring on a table on the other side of the room. That's what the Akatsuki would be after, but there was another thing that was being targeted. A notebook was sitting on the desk in front of Orokimaru. The title on the cover said Vector Control, Test Subject 001. This is what the other group wanted. Orokimaru's spy had told about the brats that were currently squatting near his base. No doubt Naruto had sent them to erase any information that could present a problem to Naruto in the future. The notebook on his desk was the only copy and Orokimaru was the only one to have read it. After all the last thing he wanted was for this information to be stolen. Hell the only reason he had made the notebook in the first place is because with all the tests he was doing simultaneously he would tend to forget the specific details of one particular test and he needed to keep that information sorted out somewhere. Orokimaru considered destroying the notebook right then and there, but that would only be completing Naruto's mission for him. Besides if the worst were to happen then Orokimaru would be sure to release this information and bring Naruto down with him. On the other hand Orokimaru could attack the girls now or send some of his minions to do it, but Orokimaru felt that if he did that it would cause the Akatsuki to move faster than they already were and that was something Orokimaru wanted to avoid at all costs. He still needed to move some of his more important equipment out of the base before the fight. So for right now Orokimaru would plan for the battle that was soon to come. The girls and Sugatsu were preparing for the fight. Zetsu had already contacted them to help with the mission and the two-man Akatsuki team would be here soon. They weren't supposed to move until they got here, but Orokimaru was moving more things out of his base by the minute and the girls were afraid that the information they were supposed to destroy was going with it. Orokimaru must have realized that he had been found out because he had given up on moving the items secretly instead focusing on speed. This not only made it more likely the information about Naruto would be moved, but also presented the problem of outsiders catching on, most notably Jiraiya's spy network. It required no explanation on how bad it would be if the leaf also got involved. It was a few more hours before Kakazu and Kisum showed up, but better late than never. With a quick planning session they were off. Orokimaru's base was located underground and with Hanabi's Byakugan they were able to find the prefect entrance point. 
The only thing that was missing was a door. Kissam using his godlike strength fixed that problem by smashing his sword into the ground creating a crater that lead all the way to the base. The group dropped into the base surprising two guards who weren't expecting their enemy to blow a hole into the base. They were easily taken care of. Now that they were in the base they could hear the frantic patter of feet all around them. Orokimaru's minions were on high alert. You better now slow us down. Kakazu said to the girls. You sure you can handle this old man because I'd be glad to take over. Mito retorted. What a why girl. She must think she's a badass. Let's see her fight Orokimaru. Kissam said. You better not look down on us or we just might take your spot in the Akatsuki. Hatomi said. If you were strong enough to be part of the Akatsuki you would have already filled one of the empty spots. Naruto has deceived you into believing your S minus class level, Kissam said. Not that I don't love the banter. Hanabi said as she used her Byakugan to look through the walls and see all the intersecting hallways. But, Hanabi threw Nuibari through a wall where it pierced a ninja in an adjacent hallway. We've got a job to do. Fine. Kiss them as they all took off down the halls. They spilt up into three groups and if any of the groups found Orokimaru then they would alert the other groups. The groups were Hatomi and Sugutsu, Hanabi and Mito, Kakazu and Kissam. The groups fought down hallways of cannon fodder checking each room as they went. It looked like most of the rooms had been cleaned out. Mito had expected some stronger ninja being in Orokimaru's base and all. Most of the ninja she and Mito ran into were easily taken care of. It might have had something to do with the close corridor combat which Mito and Hanabi excelled at or it could be that all the stronger ninjas were being sent to Kisum and Kakazu as they were the bigger threat. This would be correct as the two Akatsuki members were currently tearing through the sound four. Mito and Hanabi burst into one of the many rooms. The room was some sort of lab with tables full of strange substances. It must have not been that important as it hadn't been cleared out. The girls only spent the minimal time looking through the room. They didn't find anything of importance but as they went to leave someone was blocking the door. It was a girl with blue hair wearing a green dress. So you're Naruto's lackeys, the girl said. And you're Orokimaru's, Mito said readying her fighting stance. The name's Gurun and I am not just some lackey. I'm one of Orokimaru's elite, the girl said with a smile that reminded the girls of Naruto's. So you're the elite. Wow Orokimaru most have fell on some hard times after Naruto left. Hanabi said enjoying the tick mark that appeared over Gurun's head as she talked. I'm way more powerful than that traitor could ever be. Gurin screamed as pink crystals emerged from the ground attempting to skewer Hanabi and Mito. Sure you are, Hanabi said as she jumped out of the way and threw Nuibari at the crystal girl. Gurin blocked by making a wall of crystal between her and the needle. The Nuibari only pierced through the wall hallway before coming to a stop forcing Hanabi to retract it. Mito wouldn't just let Gurin hide behind her wall, however. She positioned her swords in an X position and slashed them sending an X, a pure lightning at the wall. It was strong enough to shatter the wall, but that may have been a bad decision. Gurin used the shattered pieces of crystal as projectiles. Mito and Hanabi were forced to dodge the incoming objects. Glass tubes and beakers shattered as the crystal made contacted. Once all the crystals were shot Hanabi rushed Gurin ready to cut off all of her chakra points. Gurin didn't have time to make another wall however her taijutsu was a lot better than Hanabi would have expected. Hanabi wasn't able to land a hit at the beginning, but even if Gurin's taijutsu was good Hanabi's was better. It was only going to be a matter of time until Hanabi made contact. That was until Gurin used her foot to crystallize the floor. Hanabi had to quickly jump away to avoid being crystallized herself. Come on surely you can do better than this. Gurin taunted before having to quickly crystallize a beaker that Mito threw at her. It fell to the ground like a rock. What was the point of that question mark? No point just wanted to get your attention on me so you could see what was going to kill you. Mito said pointing her two blades at Gurin. Lightning rife. Mito yelled as two long stains of energy shot out towards Gurin. Gurin quickly made a crystal wall, but Mito attack easily destroyed it. Gurin was forced to roll out of the way, but when she was in the middle of her roll she noticed long piece of metal coming straight out her. Gurin didn't have any time to react as the new Ibari shoot through her brain. So much for the elite, Mito said. Meanwhile in another section of the base, Hitomi and Sugutsu were in a predicament of their own. 
Well, aren't we the lucky ones? Sugatsu said as he stared down Orokimaru. Hatomi had already sent two clones to inform the other teams, but until they got the message they were on their own. Now you've found me what will you do? Orokimaru said not looking the least bit worried. Kill you of course, Sugatsu said as he attempted to lop off Orokimaru's head with his sword. Orokimaru bent back at an impossible angle to avoid her and used a light wind jutsu to push Sugatsu back. Come now you can do better than that. Orokimaru said mockingly. Hatomi in response to Orokimaru created a wall of fight that went the entire length of the room at Orokimaru. Once the fire wall had hit the other side of the room Orokimaru was nowhere to be found. Hatomi scanned the room with her Sharingan looking for his chakra signature. She was looking at the ground having expected him to dig underneath her, but was shocked when she sensed him above her. Orokimaru fell down from the ceiling with a sword in his hand. Hatomi wasn't able to dodge fast enough and got a long cut down her back. Luckily it wasn't too deep, but Hatomi didn't have time to think about her wound as Orokimaru summoned a snake right when he landed. The snake tried to shallow Hatomi whole, but she used a new sight to stab the snake through the jaw. The snake unable to move was an easy target for Sugatsu who sliced off its head. Orokimaru seeing that Sugatsu was in the air shot a snake at him from his sleeve. The snake had a sword in its mouth which was going to be so stab Sugatsu. Being in the air Sugatsu couldn't dodge, but it wasn't like he needed to as the snake passed harmlessly through his body. Sugatsu landed by Hatomi as the snake returned to Orokimaru. Did you really think that would work? Question mark, Sugatsu said. Of course not, but I'm sure this will. Orosiamaru said as he did some hand signs and a seal appeared above Sugatsu. It shot out chains of lightning around Sugatsu creating a cage around him. Then a few blots went through him making his body into a sort of gooey puddle. Shit, Hatomi said as she realized that Orokimaru had made that seal when he was climbing on the ceiling after her fire wall. Sugatsu was useless at this point so it would be up to Hatomi to fight Orokimaru. Hatomi just hoped her reinforcements got her soon. Mito and Hanabi were searching around a set of rooms near the back of the base. Things had calmed down since all the ninja on this side seemed to be dead. Mito was alone searching what looked to be an office and she struck a gold mine on one of the tables was the ring they had been looking for and on the main desk was a notebook titled Vector Control, Test Subject 001. Mito knew the only ninja to ever have Vector Control was Naruto, so that was no doubt that this was the information they had been looking for. Mito knew she should destroy it, but it was everything about Naruto ability and Mito would be lying to herself if she wasn't curious. Maybe just a little peek. Mito opened the book and started reading. Test subject 001, Aka Naruto, has just completed his first test, so far nothing impressive, he only merely threw a rock at high speeds to kill his opponent. I am however hopeful for the future all the data has suggested that the operation worked perfectly 001 has complete control over any vectors that comes into contact with his chakra. Even if he doesn't know how to properly use it yet. 001 has progressed better than I had hoped. His mind has finally caught up with his chakra and he now has complete control over vectors. He has just mastered the vectors of lightning which has given him a defense against all five of the chakra natures. 001 has become a little uncooperative lately. He has demanded I bring him books on just about everything or he will stop participating in my test. While I could just denied him his request and force him to participate it could greatly skew the data as he would most likely just still there letting his reflection do all the work and not come up with new ways to use his vectors. So I will grant his request after all gaining more knowledge could only make him more powerful. 001 has read almost every book in my library, everything from basic jutsus to the history of Iwa. While I expected him to try out some of the non-vector jutsu he must have learned from those books in the tests he has yet to do so. I wonder why question mark. 001 has become even wire these past few weeks. He has demanded that I tell him who his real family is. I realize now that giving him those books was a mistake. It's not the books themselves that are the problem, it's that I gave them to him. Naruto certainly is intelligent, after all he has to be to manage his vector control, he has been testing the waters for a while now seeing how much he could get away with. He was figuring out how important he was to me and the unfortunate truth is he figure out the answer is very important. As much as don't want to do it in order to keep the tests on schedule one will have to tell him. 
I could lie to him, but if he were to ever find out the truth it could stop the test indefinitely, so I will just have to see how it plays out. 001 had a very interesting response to the knowledge of his family. While he did seem like he would like to be with them he did not show any signs of anger at being taken from them. The tests have gone on smoothly with no change to 001 behavior. If I were to mentally evaluate him I'd say he has just accepted what happened to him, so while I believe he really wants to get back to his family he is patient and will not act out on his desire to see them. I do have a countermeasure if 001 ever does try to escape. It has to do with a ring on his wrist it takes advantage of a certain defect I implanted into the vector control formula it works by. The book was immediately shut by an angry looking Hanabi before Mito could read any farther. What are you doing question mark, Hanabi hissed. I was just checking to see if this was what we were looking for. Mito said her hastily made lie. Hanabi didn't believe here for a second and used a simple fire jutsu that was normally used to light campfires on the book. Mito watched the notebook go up in flames and while she was sad she couldn't read more it was probably better this way. After all if she had read any farther she would have discovered something that couldn't be taken back. As the last corner burned Hitomi walked into the room. Follow me, she said. Mito and Hanabi followed her without question knowing that this was just a clone and the real Hitomi would be fighting Orokimaru this very moment. But what the real Hitomi was doing right now could hardly be considered fighting. She was laid out on her back a crimson liquid pooling under her. Hatomi was struggling to breathe and just the idea of standing made her want to hurl. Her side was on the other side of the room the cable connecting it to Hatomi having been cut by Orokimaru. Meanwhile Orokimaru was standing there without a scratch. He slowing made his way towards Hatomi talking as he went. I would be lying if I said I expected more from you, but all things considered you didn't do bad. You should have realized however that fighting an s minus class was way beyond you level. Just because you were trained by Naruto doesn't mean you have his power. There are so many ninja in the world, but less than 1% of them are s minus class and yet here you are fighting one. Is because Naruto said you were ready question mark, Hitomi tried desperately to say something, but her throat felt dry even though it was wetted by blood. Naruto might have truly believed you were ready, but you need to understand something. It always been said that no ninja has started out strong they need experience and training to become as powerful as their older peers. This is true, but there is one exception, Naruto has always been strong. Ever since I gave him vector control he has been able to beat ninja that should be way out of his league. Why are you telling me this question mark, Hitomi said finally able to get some words out. Because I think you should know a little more about the person you chose to follow. You are following someone who can't comprehend the difference of strength between an s minus class and someone's he's trained. In his mind s minus class or the norm, nothing to even be worried about. So you see he just assumed that you were ready, and now you're going to pay the price for following someone who has never been weak. You going to kill me question mark, Hitomi said. If I wanted to do that I could have done it any time during our fight. I want something else, something that I've wanted for a long time, Orokimaru bent down and brought his hand over Hitomi's eyes. Pain exploded as he ripped her left eye from her socket. Hitomi's previously stiff body was contracted as she brought her legs up to her stomach and her hands over her left eye socket. The pain also caused her to close her other eye leaving her unable to see anything. Come on now we've still got the other on, Orokimaru said but just as he was about to remove the other one Hitomi heard an explosion and the crumbling of bricks. She felt Orokimaru's hot breath leave her face as he stood back up. You couldn't have waited a little longer question mark, Orokimaru asked. Sorry but Naruto would be pissed if we let one of his brats die. Kissam said. Do you really think he cares question mark, Orokimaru asked. If he doesn't care about them because of his feelings, he certainly cares about them because of their usefulness. Even if there was no way they could beat you. Kakazu said. And you think you can. Orokimaru said. Then there was explosions, fighting, intense heat, all signs of truly powerful people fighting. Hitomi in her pain-induced mind realized that s minus classes were something that a person like her could never hope to fight on equal footing. The pain finally became too much, and Hitomi passed out. By the time Hitomi woke up the fight was over. She was no longer inside Orokimaru's base she was on a bedroll looking up at the green of the trees.
She forced her stiff body to sit up as she brought her hand to the left side of her face. She felt a number of bandages wrapped around her eye, but to her surprise she could feel her eye was back where it was supposed to be. How are you feeling? Question mark, Mito said from beside her Tommy. I felt better, but at least I have my eye back. Hatomi said. You can thank Hanabi for that she was able to use her Byakugan and few medical jutsu to put your eye back in place. It's just a good thing it was recently removed Hanabi didn't think she'd be able to do if we had gotten there much later. Mito said. So what happened? Question mark. Hatomi asked lying back down as a headache started to set in. Well for one Orokimaru is dead, but so is Kakazu. Mito started but was quickly interrupted by Hatomi. How? Question mark it was four against one, eight if you count all of Kakazu's hearts how do you lose Kakazu question mark, Hatomi said. Well it wasn't exactly eight against one. Hanabi and I figured out pretty early on that we were just getting in the way, so we spent our time healing you and freeing Sugatsu while they fought. Also Kakazu lost his wind heart even before fighting Orokimaru. There was also the issue that they were fighting Orokimaru on his own turf. So basically what happened was Orokimaru would use tricks and traps to take out Kakazu's hearts one by one until he finally killed him. That's not to say Orokimaru didn't take serious damage because by the time he took out Kakazu he was too weak to beat Kissim. After that we got your eye and got as far away from the base as we could. Mito said giving a brief explanation the devastating fight that must have occurred. But it's just so frustrating Hanabi and I took out a girl that claimed to be Orokimaru's elite so easily, but when faced with the Sanin we were nothing. All Naruto's training and all that planning didn't do anything to lessen the gap between s minus class and regular ninja. Is it really that wide question mark? Just clam down the mission was a success, so there's no point in beating yourself up over it. Hatomi said. I guess you're right. Mito said giving a weak smile. So what are we going to do now question mark, Hatomi asked. Mito handed Hatomi an Akatsuki ring. You get a day to rest, but then we're going to seal the seven tails. So we're now official members. Hatomi said looking at the ring. Well it more to fill space to make the sealing go faster since we're not on the Akatsuki's level, not even close, but technically yes. Our partners have already been decided. You get Kissim, I get Deodara, and Hanabi is with Naruto. Mito said. I'm sure she's happy. Hatomi said knowing how much Hanabi wanted to be with Naruto. But what about Sugatsu question mark? Well he was supposed to be partnered with Zetsu, but he turned him down saying he didn't want to be part of the Akatsuki although he did agree to help with the ceiling. He's basically already part of the Akatsuki why'd he turn him down question mark? Hatomi asked. I don't know, but something tells me that it has something to do with that conversation he and Naruto had. Mito said. Naruto's here. Hatomi said nearly jumping out of bed in excitement. No he's not. Apparently Naruto demanded Sugatsu's presence and Zetsu was forced to bring him to Naruto and then back here. Once Sugatsu returned he refused the Akatsuki's invitation. Mito said showing she didn't even know what Naruto was up to. That's pretty suspicious of him. Hatomi said. You're not the only one who thinks that. I've heard Kissim talking about how the Akatsuki is question Naruto's loyalty. Apparently Naruto caught the Seven Tails a while ago, but because Kissim and Kakazu were dealing with Orokimaru they postponed the ceiling, and apparently in that time he and the Seven Tails have become rather friendly. So the Akatsuki thinks he might not seal her. Hatomi asked. Exactly, but only time will tell, so get some rest and just remember whatever Naruto decides we go along with him not the Akatsuki. Mito said getting up and leaving Hatomi to get some rest. Right, Hatomi said as she fell back into a dreamless sleep. Jiraiya was walking around Orokimaru's destroyed base. Lee Fanbu was searching the whole base, but so far nothing had turned up except a whole lot of bodies Orokimaru's and the Akatsuki member Kakazu's include. Jiraiya's spies had informed him of Orokimaru's base as they had seen all the stuff being moved. Jiraiya rushed here as fast as he could but by the time he arrived the party had already ended. All that stuff that had been moved would be worthless to Orokimaru now. Jiraiya was thinking about calling it quits and return to the leaf, but Kakashi came up beside him. Jiraiya we found a survivor. Take me to him, Jiraiya said happy that the trip wasn't a complete waste. Kakashi lead Jiraiya into a small room where a boy was being guarded by two Anbu. The boy looked up as soon as Jiraiya entered to room. 
Hello Master Jiraiya. My name it Kabuto. It's a pleasure to meet you. The boy said with a smile that screamed deception and cunning. Naruto was more than willing to begin the sealing. A lot of the Akatsuki members expected this, but most of them thought he would do something during the sealing he was the only one whose real body was present after all, but no, everything went off without a hitch. It also helped Naruto's case that Fu was less than willing to start, but in three days the statue had the chakra and Fu was dead. This didn't mean the Akatsuki wasn't still suspicions of Naruto after all you'd have to be a complete idiot to not see he was planning something, but in an organization that was made up of traitors and terrorists everyone was planning something, so for right now Naruto could be overlooked. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.